Okay, so let's sew on this Singer 237MA. I have it in the center needle position. I have straight stitch, and I'm going to put it down to like six or eight in just a minute. But I wanted to show you when you want to um, choose your stitch length, which there's several, and including this super fine. If you go up to fine, you can do like an applique. It'll satin stitch almost in in um, in place. You can do a nice little fine applique stitch on the exterior of something if you want, or make a really really tight buttonhole. So anyway, what I want to show you is you have to loosen to the left and go, did you hear it, um, snap? The snap is this plastic part coming out, which you want it to do before you move it. Um, it's spring-loaded back there, and then you're going to move to where you want, like I want, um, this probably looks different where you are, it's about a 10, and I'm going to lock it. And the reason you want to lock it is this is the same lever that is reverse. So as I go along and I want to reverse, I want to lock my stitch, I'm going to reverse, which is goes up, now it can stay so I can reverse a long time, but if I'm just like lock stitching at the beginning or the end of a line of stitch, I want to go up down. Well, you want to lock where your stitch length is, otherwise, if you don't, let's say I'm sewing on long at a 10 or a 12 and I go reverse, I go back down, now I'm down at a 6. Didn't mean to do that. So anyway, just be a little careful of that. You can hear it squeaking because it's very, very tight. It's supposed to be tight. You don't want your stitch lengths to um, skip around. So like I said, when you loosen it that way, just wait for it to click back out before you think it's set somewhere, okay? Alrighty, so now I'm locked. Excuse me a second. got to move over here so you can see what I'm going to do. Here's all my um, fabrics I'm going to show you. And the point of doing this demonstration is to show you a very wide variety of fabrics that this machine can do. It's not going to do bridal kind of leather like um, horse bridal. And neither is any other machine that sits on your tabletop like this. So don't be fooled. These are strong. These are industrial made. This particular one has a 0.84 amp motor, which is strong. It's especially strong when you consider the huge steel drive that's in it. So see the photo um, that I have separate from this video that shows the top. I mean, the steel rod that drives this thing is like the size of a child's wrist. It's huge. But it's not going to go through bridal leathers and um, halter leather is what I mean. So anyway, I want to show you a bunch of fabrics I have here and then we're going to do a quick stitch. It's going to be kind of loud because I have this open so you can see it moving. And um, I have the mic on so it's going to um, make the motor really loud. And also you're going to hear this sound, which is the rattling of the thread on the spool pin. Let me check my spool pin. Give me just a second here. There we go. Put it back down. But the thing is that the inside of the thread spool is bigger than the spool pin, so it's loose, so it'll come off as you're sewing. But it does make a little bit of noise. I just want you to know that's not the machine. That's just the thread. Okay, let me see what I have here. Got my threads all out back. I'm going to show you the fabrics that I'm working on here. So um, I have a size 14 needle and a dual duty nice thread. Um, probably Coates and Clark, that's usually what I use, but you know, I'm going to do a lot of heavyweight stuff here and I, I did not put in a heavy needle or a heavy thread because I'm also going to be showing you it's a very, very nice ladies dress thin chiffon type fabric. This is a cotton with an ironed on uh, stiffener like a Pelham. So I just want to show you the variety of things you can do. You can do a lot more of course, but I just want to show you some of these things. And then we're going to go to a really nice, um, like a pillow cotton, a cotton you make pillows out of. There's two, four, six layers of that. This is batting, like if you made a quilt. So there's, you know, two complete sides of the quilt. Um, this is heavyweight upholstery, maybe for an ottoman. One, two, three, four of that. It'll do more. I'm just giving you, you know, a, a variety here. Now we're back to a nice heavyweight uh, cotton. You might make uh, pants out of two, four six of that and again it could do eight ten I'm sure you know more not that you're going to make more but if you put pockets in or you put welting in or something you know that's why I give you different thicknesses so you can see what's going on I also have a woven I'm going to put a cording in this is a super heavy duty corduroy there's two four layers there I believe this is a heavy um, velveteen four layers there this is a really nice heavy woven uh, with a little bit of a backing, four layers there. This is marine gate grade vinyl, four layers there. See the backing on it? Sorry, I laid it down on my work table where I clean my machines. Didn't get a little clean on the back. Uh, this is stretched denim. 
Yeah, I have eight layers there of stretch denim. I've already gone through it one time. Okay, nice straight tight stitch. Front and back. And then last but not least, I have the uh, velveteen with a decorator trim, so like if you're making draperies. Uh, and I also have the marine grade vinyl here with the cording in between, because lots of times when you make boat cushions, that's what you're going to do. So there's just a really wise example. So if you can give me just another minute, I'm going to run this pretty fast. And um, you'll see how easy it is to go through everything. I'm going to come around and check that my uh, video is doing what I want it to do. All right, looks okay. Let me see my stitch length. I think I'll do an eight. Lock it in. have to touch it, the feed dogs are really strong. Okay, that was my mistake. You're supposed to set the needle when you do a vinyl or an upholstery uh, leather. So see, nice and tight and little. So see how it's set? It'll start right up that time. Okay, since I have the vinyl going, let's do this one with the cord. You can put a zipper foot on for that if you want to. Set the needle, Heather. There we go. Your upholstery. So it's going through the upholstery, and also this is a really, really thick header there on the decorative fringe. a problem. If you can get it underneath there, it's going to sew it. You know what? Let's try a zigzag. I haven't shown you that yet. All right, so I'm raising the needle. I'm going to watch if it's going to move. Nice wide zigzag there. That was easy. Let's go in reverse on that. And again, that noise is just my uh, spool. It's plastic. It's rattling around on the spool pin. Okay. Here we go. I tell you what, since we're zigzagging, let's do something else first. Let's do this heavy corduroy. That'll take a zigzag too. Okay, now I can do a different width. I have eight choices. 
And then if you want to do different lengths, you have numerous different choices. So let's do something really fine. And you can see it'll almost be like an applique kind of stitch, nice and tight. See how that fed it all by itself? I didn't even have to help it. Look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, what do we have here? We have a whole bunch of denim, and then I have one more heavyweight with a trim, and then we're all done. Here we have eight layers. Stretch denim fits snugly underneath there. Okay. Oh yeah, I have done the applique. Alright, there's the close applique. Now let's open it up a little bit so we make a little speed here. That means you make your stitches less per inch. Okay, so I'm going to put it down a little bit. I'm going to keep the same width just to show you the difference already. Alright guys, this definitely is going to sell. This is the Stinger 237 MA, meaning made in Italy it is. Thank you very much. Look how pretty that is. Front and back. Go tight. Thank you now.